Now that we have the UI defined, it's time for us to code the functionality. Remember that we're going to be coding this on the view controller because this view that we have here inherits from this particular view controller in here. So this view is going to be deeply linked and actually controlled by this view controller in here. So I'm going to open up and as you can see, this is C-sharp. We are coding an iOS app with C-sharp. That is cool. Uh, head back to the main to the main dot storyboard where we define the UI and what we need is to name our elements so we can access them from our code in viewcontroller.cs. So I'm going to select the height text field and I'm going to head back to the properties inspector and as you can see I've already named this one height text field. This is a very good practice to name our elements the way they do or the way they work or what they do and what they are. In this case this is a text field so I'm calling it height text field. In the case of this one you guessed it I will call it weight text field. And finally oh no not finally I also need a name for my button and I'm going to call this calculate button and finally now I will select the label and I will call it result label or BMI label and now that all my elements have their names I can save this and go to the viewcontroller.cs file in here is where the fun is going to happen so we have this view did load. This works the exact same way as an iOS application if you're familiar with it. Of course this is C sharp, but the view did load method is going to be the first one to be called when the view loads, as its name suggests. So in here we are going to first create an event. What event you say? Well the user will write their height, their weight, and click on the button. When you click on the button, an event is fired. And when that event is fired, we can actually do something with what was written in here. We can evaluate what the values are, and we calculate the value of the body mass index. So in here, what I have to do is access the calculate button and notice how it just appears in there magically and I can hit enter and this one is going to have a touch touch up inside touch up inside event that is going to fire when the user touches inside up of the button right so in fact there are a lot of events in here uh, touch drag exit, touch drag inside, touch drag outside, touch up outside, but the one that we care about right now is the touch up inside. And in fact, when it comes to buttons, it's pretty much going to be the only one that we're going to be using. Now we're going to call an event by writing plus equal space, and in here we have many different kinds of events that can be created. The one that I want is all the way to the bottom calculate button underscore touch up inside this is going to create kind of like another uh, method that is going to be called when this event is called now in this method is where i can actually get the values from whatever is written in the text field so i'm going to get variable height equals and remember that we have the height text field and this has a text property and this height if you remember is going to be a string but I may want it to be a float because you know height is going to be in meters and meters is a number and a number can be a float 
and it's supposed to be a float because no one really measures one or two or three meters. But I cannot convert implicitly from text or from string to float. So what I do? Float dot parse, just like we did in the previous lectures. And there we go. And we'll also like the weight. This is going to be equal to float dot parse weight text field dot text. And now we have both the weight and the height. Now, as it turns out, I know what you have to do to get the BMI. So I'm going to create a new variable, which is going to be float. I'm going to call it BMI. And what you have to do is divide the height by the weight times the weight like this. And like this, you're going to get the BMI, the body mass index. Whoops, sorry, no, it's the other way around. It's weight, height, and height. This should give us the BMI. And finally, I'm going to access the result label. Uh, what did I call it? BMI label, BMI label dot text and I'm going to assign it to BMI dot to string. And what this is to string? Well, every single object of any type has a to string method that will parse whatever the value of the object is to string. In this case, a float will just display the float in a string. There's a little more science behind this, but just Keep in mind that right now to string will do for us the conversion from float to string. Great, so let's try this out. I'm going to run this and it's going to run, oh, stop, stop, stop. I want to run this on the iPhone 6 Plus since that's what my design tells me. Otherwise, it will just look off. And I'm going to run it on the 6 Plus simulator I believe this is the one. It's starting, it shouldn't take long. Here we have the application running. I write my height in meters. The first thing that you notice is that the keyboard is not the best one, but okay, I will write my height in meters. And I will write my weight in kilograms. Calculate BMI and it tells me my BMI, 22.83951. Perfect, I'm calculating my BMI. Congratulations, you have just completed your first iOS application. With summary. Hi, thanks all for watching this video. If you enjoy it or you want to learn more about summary and C Sharp, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want access to the full summary course that I have in Udemy, I'll make sure to drop a very good discount in the description down below. Very good discount, you should check it out. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video or inside the curse. Bye-bye. That one's good.